guess that's the first question we should ask, uh, Stefan, is when should people start thinking about, I mean, bearing in mind different zones, I mean, generally speaking, our viewers are zone four, five, six, some are three, and of course, there's people all over the place, but uh, um, anyway, um, what, what, would you, what would you say about that? I would say, first of all, depends how many trees you have, because <laughs> it, I, I know some orchardists who start in January and they're not done by May because they have hun over a hundred acres. And so, yeah, it depends how many trees you have. If you have five trees, start middle of March or end of March. That's a great time. Uh, so it really depends. You want to wait after the coldest period. That's usually the criteria because you don't want some big cuts on a tree and then get minus 25, minus 30. So that's the first criteria. I, t I tend to wait. This year was kind of odd because we really didn't get cold. We had cold in November, then we just had cold last week. Uh, so I've been kind of waiting because I knew it would get colder. and. So any time after the coldest period is good, depending on how many you have, and I guess depending your access. If, if you can prune because there isn't much snow, great, go ahead and do it. If you have to prune in snowshoes, well, you have to prune in snowshoes. Uh, I've had years where I've pruned the very tops of my trees with snowshoes on, and then I came back three weeks later when the snow had melted and I did the bottom half of the tree. Oh, so you could use the snow like a ladder. Exactly. That makes it a lot faster because then you don't need, either you don't need the poles or you just don't need a ladder. It's, it's, it's really nice to do that way. Right. Uh, yeah, the other thing is I would say when, whenever you start, start with your biggest trees. Biggest. Yeah. So if you have, you know, you young trees you just planted, leave them till the end. You don't want to make big cuts on a tree that's not very big. So it's, that's, the, that's kind of the, the rule is start with your biggest standard trees if you have, and then go to semi-dwarf and finish with your dwarf trees. And nobody asked this question, but I might as well ask if, you know, I, this is a perfect example, because this, just last spring, spring 2019, I planted a whip. Um, so what, uh, so I mean, the whip would have been maybe two feet high and now it's maybe four feet high or something like that. Um, should I prune that or should I leave that alone? Well, that's a perfect one, Greg, right there. If you have not pruned it and if you buy a whip, which means exactly what you said, it's two feet high, something that's two, three, even four feet high and especially has never been pruned, I would just leave it. I wouldn't even touch it. And I wouldn't touch it for years because unless you have uh, a second branch that's gonna become the top and you have two really competing vertical branches, then either you prune it or even better train it. So just bend it out of the angle of going up and you may be able to, and I have a whole block in the orchard that I tested years ago because I had just learned about training versus pruning. And I thought, wow, not pruning <laughs> is fantastic. Right. Like the amount of work it saves is really worthwhile. So do you have to? No. But if you have pruned, you probably will have to in some capacity continue at least every two or three years. And so like your situation, I would just leave that tree. Don't touch it. Don't, you know, don't even think about going, because it will branch naturally. It will, however it wants to, because each cultivar kind of has its own characteristic. Right. And so if you don't touch it, you can have a tree that's superbly easy to, to, to manage. So I would only want to prune it years from now when I start seeing the branches shading each other or rubbing against each other, you know, little things like that that I know are going to cause it problems. Chances okay. are, if you don't touch it, you won't even have that happen. <laughs> well, that's, that's the kind of, I mean, shading, yes, some will shade, but the rubbing against each other, it's, uh, I don't know if you've ever seen a photo that somebody would take if you're kind of in the forest and you lie on the ground and you take a picture upwards 
and you see the tree canopy. And that's, those I've, are amazing. I've taken, I've taken that picture myself. It's, I always, I love laying down in the woods and staring up to the trees like that. So I've taken that picture so I can capture that moment. Well, that exact angle, I've always wondered, because when you see those, you see that each tree has kind of its, its own space and the two don't mesh, they don't mix. Each tree has its own area. And it's like, wow, that's pretty amazing. It's like they're talking to each other and they right. don't compete on each other's space. Well, if you have never touched the tree, then the branches do the same thing. They each sense, or you know, I guess they do sense because the leaves will touch at some point. And so they probably kind of stop so that they don't rub the other one. They seek the light, uh, perhaps. Well, they seek the light, but they seek not to overlap because it's not to the tree's advantage to have two branches basically touching each other, rubbing each other. And sense. so where you do have that, and that's typical of a tree that's been pruned without necessarily uh, knowing the the art of it and then you'll get branches crossing you'll get some touching and so on because you've pruned somewhere on a branch and it's sending out other branches so if you can don't touch it in your tree don't touch it at all okay wait three four five years and see and it probably will be very good very easy and without any maintenance and in pruning I can't wait to see how this one, it says sweet 16 variety, which from everything I've heard is supposed to be really delicious. Um, so I'm, I'm, I can't and wait. And if you don't it touch it, if you don't prune it, it will produce sooner. Mm. Like you save one, maybe two years. The problem is when you start pruning, especially if you, if you do anything about touching that, that whip branch, you know, the, the, the one in the middle, uh, you'll delay it instantly by one or two years because as soon as you cut the whip, it will send out secondary branches, but it will slow down the, the terminal uh, growth. Anyway. Oh, I'm glad I asked you. I, I, I love cutting things. <laughs> so I guess, I, uh, the, first, the first year I got my trees in my garden, I got those five trees. And I, I just watched a bunch of documentaries on pruning and I got all, you know, sheer happy. And uh, I freaked one of them up really bad. Uh, you know, it, it's... Uh, the whole tree is, is, some of it's alive and some of it's dead. It's really never, it's, it's slowly come back from, I think I took too much from it. The other one's okay. The other one, you know, we had a hurricane, Hurricane Dorian, and it pushed uh, all my apple trees right down to the ground. <laughs> oh, anyway, enough about me. Okay, so uh, let's get started with the questions. Uh, so the first question.